Hey, what's going on guys? Today we have my 95 Civic hatchback. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I'm going to be converting this from an automatic to a manual. As I showed you guys in the last video, this is an automatic and that's probably the reason I was able to find such a good clean one that hadn't been modified. And although this would scare a lot of people and it looks like it's a lot of work to convert it, it's actually quite simple and doesn't require that much stuff. Here is all the parts that you need to do a manual conversion if you're going from the stock engine to a K20, in my example, if you're gonna do a stock D-series manual conversion, there would be some more stuff to get, but I'll get into that later. One of the first and most obvious parts you need is the clutch master cylinder. So I grabbed this guy off of eBay. This is one that was pulled off a used car. So we've got the clutch master cylinder right here. And then we have the little reservoir that holds the clutch fluid there. The other thing we need is the clutch pedal right here. So this is a clutch assembly that bolts into the car. And because the automatic models have a much wider brake pedal, I went ahead and picked up a set of pedals out of a manual car as well that include the brake and the gas, although it should be noted that the gas pedal is the same throughout all the models. And last but not least, one of the more confusing things that you see on a lot of forum posts or people talk about is the wiring harness to convert it to make everything work properly like it should from the factory. This harness was made by a guy named Carlos from C2Spec Motoring. He's a really nice and smart guy that knows a lot about doing wiring conversions for the automatic to manual cars. Uh, what he did was basically make this a plug and play system, which is awesome. This connector right here plugs in to the center console right here. If you take this apart, there is a connector that controls the automatic shifter in there. So that plugs in right there. And then what some people do is there's a circuit that connects for when you start the car to send power to the starter. Some people just jump that, but uh, how it works from the factory on a manual car is there is a relay which gets connected to it from the factory and that sends power to the starter so you don't have a direct shot of power to the starter. So this is a much safer way to do it. He also includes a plug for the clutch safety switch, which you can see plugs in right here and this connector right here which is cool and then these I believe go to the ECU and I believe those have something to do with making the reverse light work uh, don't quote me on that I'll go into that more in depth when we actually do the swap and then of course we've got a little ground right here so literally everything you need to make it work uh, just how it did from the factory is here and it's all plug and play which is awesome I think I paid around uh, 120 Something like that around this, but um, very good. It's very good quality. It's all uh, mil spec stuff, all brand new connectors. Uh, highly recommend. And now I'll show you guys under the hood just all the steps required and how easy it is to convert this. Okay, now that we're under the hood, I can show you guys a few of the things. First, um, even though this is an automatic, if you look down here where the clutch master cylinder reservoir would be, you can see there's still the two little mounting holes for where you would mount it. And then if you look down in there, let me zoom in you right there, that is the block off plate where this clutch master cylinder right here bolts into with those two bolts. So all you have to do on the inside of this firewall, on the inside of the car, there's two bolts right there. You unbolt them and that little plate pops out. And then that makes a hole just for this guy to slide into. Once you do have that mounted in there and then you have the clutch pedal assembly mounted in there, it's pretty simple. Just imagine the firewall is in between this. This guy slides in here. This little connector slides right there. You slide it all the way in there. I have one of my little pins that goes in there with a little retaining clip. And that's it. That's how the clutch pedal operates the clutch master cylinder. And it's literally that easy, just connecting that little rod under the car. And just for kicks, we can kind of visualize where this goes. So these little holes mount up right here. And then we got our little reservoir right there next to our bigger Integra brake reservoir. Now regarding the clutch line, normally the clutch line is gonna come out right here and it would be a hard line if this was a stock manual D-series that would come over here, go all the way down this side, come over here and hard line out to the clutch slave uh, master cylinder that would operate the uh, transmission right there but since I am going with a K20 swap and the engine is basically reversed to where the intake is on the front and the exhaust manifolds on the back 
that also means the transmission goes from the left side to the right side. So we no longer can even use that OEM hard line that goes over to the clutch slave cylinder. And so what you do is you would run a stainless steel hydraulic line similar to something like this. That would screw into there like so. And then that just kind of gets routed in here to the K20 transmission since it sits down over here and it's that simple. So no, no need to grab any of the OEM hard lines and rerun them or remake new hard lines. You just use a stainless steel rated hydraulic line and it works great. And then last thing regarding the shifting of the actual automatic to manual swap. If this was a stock D-series transmission swap, there are shifter bars that go under the middle of the car that connect to the shifter inside the car that you would have to swap onto there. But since we are going to a K20, those use shifter cables instead, so we don't even need to worry about that because you just run those through the firewall when you do the K20 swap anyway. And that is basically it, guys. It's really not that complicated, as you can see. I think in total, all the parts I paid for is around two to $300, including the brake pedal, gas pedal, clutch pedal, the master cylinder, uh, and even the custom wiring harness. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments. I'll see you in the next video.